Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James, and in this video, let's go over the Daryl Dixon season trailer that uh, we got to see at the end of episode one. It's a season trailer, not just episode two, and it's got a lot of scenes packed into it. It looks great. The season looks great. Let's break it down. Uh, before I do that, I just wanted to do a shout out at Jesus Gonzalez, longtime uh, channel fan, commenter, been around a long time supporting with views with comments, and even more. So a big shout out and a thank you to Jesus. And really thank you to everyone um, just watching the videos, uh, showing up in the comments and everything like that. Views on the channel went way down since the main show went off. So it's good to have some decent spinoffs coming around to bring you guys back. And it's fun to talk. Let's jump into this trailer. Lord, I'm sure you have your reasons for turning the whole world upside down. So, yeah, we got Daryl, you know, praying pretty much. And, you know, as far as religion, bringing in religion to this, the overtones of the show, you know, whatever, I'm okay with it. Anybody can be religious or want to be or not want to be or whatever. And if Daryl becomes that, you know, it's his character. That's the way he's written, whatever. But I think in the apocalyptic times, maybe, maybe not. You know, maybe people would give up on it that did believe. It just seems like a lot of people would really want to believe you know, and be asking for help in most every situation every day. And in this frame, it looks like the kids, the young people that we saw um, in the previous trailers, I think we even get another shot in this trailer, is taking the captives into somewhere, but it seems like they become friends uh, along the way. And that's the thing, you know, the map that we saw in episode one, um, the path that they're supposed to take, there's radio coordinates with each of those little places and that's a group that's supposed to be friendlies that can help them along the way. Um, so radio coordinates and everything. So we're going to see different groups along the way. And throughout this trailer, I'll show you. I'll spot them out. We'll see different groups. And these people with the little spears wearing masks, that's one group. The kids, they'll be all at a table later in the trailer. But if this isn't good enough for you, I don't know what is. And here it is, the table I was talking about. It looks like that group that had them uh, captured initially, they're now all feasting together, so they become friends. Daryl uh, pretty much saying a prayer at the table, saying, Lord, if this ain't a blessing right here, I don't know what is. You hear that? It's Paris crying. I feel sorry for them. This season on Daryl Dixon. So, yeah, they're going along their journey. You see France. You see part of Paris and all that. You know, we're going to see... A long part of their journey this guy right here i think he's one specific group not the same as the kids um you see the spears a shot we've already seen before right here the kids it seemingly in the mask i think that's one group in itself and this guy right here i think that's one group in itself want to know what the world was like before you can't mess with you never had strange to see and again we see the kids that's one group and you see the glasses that she's laying there seeming like maybe belong to somebody that just died like it, it's a tribute at a memorial um who who was it you know not sure you see isabel and daryl possibly camping at the same place and then you see the movie theater or it looks like a movie playing with the kids and daryl sitting there and i think that line daryl says you can't miss what you never had and, you know, I don't know. We'll see how that plays out, how that line plays out in the show. But, man, you know, I'm not one to get too, I don't know, uh, sentimental or whatever the word may be. But I kind of felt something seeing Daryl sitting here with these kids, you know, sitting there at the table, you know, finding this family along the way, uh, being who he is, uh, you know, all the things that he's been through. I mean, he's been through so much. And here he is in France sitting here with family and that's the whole thing about daryl he didn't really he had merle you know yes he had a dad and a mom but he had a bad childhood being with merle wasn't great he didn't really have family till rick came along his true brother his real true brother and the rest of the gang his family so to see him there in that moment really cool but another group or another place i guess you could say the club we've seen in the synopsis of the shows uh, they got to talk to the owner guy. We'll see him in just a second. But see the girl swinging over there. Um, we'll see Daryl fighting, I think, um, up on the catwalk at this place later. Again, after all these years, you got someone in here that can help me get on? 
the guy that's showing right here talking, saying, you know, it kind of sounds like he seems like he knew Isabel from the past somehow. But I think they may have to make a deal or do something. You know, something's going to be up with this guy. He's probably crooked. He'll probably double cross him. But then we go back to this guy a couple times, a couple different ways. We see the rooftop and stuff, which is really cool. But I think that's one group, like I say. You just see them in a different setting. This guy versus, say, the kids. You know, it just looks like they're somewhere else. And this guy's got rooftops. He's more in the city. I'm in Maine, by the coast. I'll tell you all about it when I see you. Well, I'll be there in about a week. But then we got this guy. So Daryl's on his motorcycle. He's still in the States, probably around Maine. He turns around. There's this guy watching him. Um, you know, I think he just gets into trouble and somehow gets uh, put on the ship and, of course, causes havoc and ends up in France, that kind of thing. And some of you guys have been talking about it in the comments and stuff. Yes, the connection to Maine, what he says in the trailer here, that uh, part I'm about to get to, uh, Maine and CRM connections in America and uh, the PPP card and Tales of the Walking Dead. Yeah, that's going to be in a separate video. Be looking for it coming very soon after this one. And I do believe this is Carol. If he's not talking to Carol, he's talking to somebody at Commonwealth that could tell Carol what, you know, it could be Eugene, anybody that he called into. But I'm imagining he's talking to Carol. He says he's in Maine, up the coast, and that he'll be back, actually. But he doesn't come back. So Carol goes out to look for him and follows the clues, his bike, you know, whatever else could be uh, left right there around the dock. Something or somebody is there that she, you know, puts a knife to their throat and says, where's Daryl? And um, they let him know. And then another ship comes through. You know, it's a route. It's a regular route. So she just waits for the next ship and she's heading to France to find her, you know, best friend, her family. And we get some really cool shots, some more shots of him on the boat fighting that crazy ass experimental walker thingy there you know whatever it is a burner a runner burner runner uh i can't wait to see that part of the show and see that some of that play out i know it probably won't show a whole lot but still it'll be cool to see that and isabel before times i want to see that stuff Another angle of that explosion, really cool, really cool. But then we got uh, Genet, the bad guy. Um, their organization, you know, is called The Cause. And she's saying the world is ours now. We're going to make our enemies pay. So what does she mean by that? You know, a lot of people are going to put uh, CRM into that particular scene, those shots that we got right there, uh, somehow some way you know into their theory to make it try to connect or something but let's just say take my theory for example that it's not crm connected you know and look at it from that angle for a second could they be an organization that spread out like crm and you know like i say a theory in a previous video of mine is that crm isn't someone we're going to have to fight against some army against army yes we have Major General Bill, but really Rick just needs to take him down and the few baddies at the top and then put somebody good in their place as far as running the place. And you've got a good army that is in uh, Commonwealth realm, is in Alexandria's realm. Everybody's working together on the American side, per se, and one big army that could fight the cause or you know if she's someone like a major general bill that has established many different places but you know in this scene right here it says what it says i'm not sure exactly you know if uh this is right after she left the ship is something she's saying i think it seems like it but maybe this is going back this could be a scene that's going back to when she made the ship and that's why i think she's maybe not as spread out as um civic republic kind of thing i don't know is that she said it took them three years to get this ship seaworthy. I, so that's why I'm thinking uh, it definitely was in France first, possibly, and went to America and then back instead of originating in America. But this could be like a, a flashback to the induction of the ship saying, hey, we got a ship now. We're going to sail to America. The world is ours. But as I've said in a previous video, the experiments kind of throw everything into a bigger question, uh, especially questioning my theory that there's no connection because we know of World Beyond. We know the French scientist thing, connection somehow, the Primrose team. Yeah, I think if there's a CRM connection, it could be through the Primrose thing. And then the Primrose thing somehow is um, maybe connected to CR uh, or CRM over there in America. 
uh, somehow, some way through just a person. You know, it's a small connection. I don't know. Uh, there's still a big possibility that, yeah, you guys are right and I'm wrong, that CRM is connected somehow. I just don't see it yet, but let's just let it play out. He deserves to know who he is. Yeah, so this zombie here, uh, this walker that runs towards the glass and hits it and blood just splatters, you know, it almost makes you think of the lady that got shot in the World Beyond post credit scene. She just ran toward the door and it did look like she was just hitting it so hard she was beating herself to a pulp. Is this the same thing? Are they trying to fix it? You know, why? I think we've, uh, at least a couple of us have mentioned, or you guys have mentioned, uh, started a comment about why are they experimenting? It's got to be for a cure or something like that. It just don't make sense to try to weaponize them at this point or something like that. So I don't know. You know, you look at Fear the Walking Dead and Troy has an army of the dead, you know, so maybe weaponization of them is exactly what they want to do. You know, could the cause want to get a bunch of these together and unleash them in America to wipe out CRM to say, hey, we're coming. We're going to unleash a lot of these crazy ass variant walkers to wipe all y'all out. And then we're just going to come through and, you know, easily take over your country because we know how to fight them. I mean, really, sneak a handful of those into the middle of Civic Republic and let them loose? Um, you know, I don't know. Could could Civic Republic defenses and people and soldiers react good enough to take them down? Or could it wipe out the city? And then we get some Loran stuff as far as some walkers breaking through some sandbags. Not good. And Isabel carrying the baby um, as he was born in the flashback. And I think, you know, could it be her sister? I think she may be related to the lady, maybe. I don't know, that, that had the kid. But I think the lady turned into a walker while she was pregnant before, like while she's in labor or, you know, something drastic. She was a walker. And could she have been a walker for a while? I figured it kind of just happened. Maybe she died, died in childbirth and became a walker before they could get the kid out. You know, I don't know what the situation but I think the mom would be a walker before they got the baby out. So that's why, partly why he's special. Not immune or anything, just special. It's a sign. You know how a lot of things in that they showed us in episode one about the nuns is, you know, the sign or the symbol or, you know, we have this belief or philosophy or in Laurent's case, you know, he can kind of see the future kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff kind of packed into all of that. I wonder who this little kid is over here. We got Isabel fighting some walkers. That looks like where Daryl's pinned on one side and Laurent's on the other side, you know. And the praying thing, I just think maybe that's a dream, vision, something. It's not real. So he's not immune, you know. The walkers aren't really there kind of thing. I don't know. But then we got the guys, you know, that big crazy castle out there in the middle of nowhere. That's the scene right there. And then Daryl in the pit. You know, I'm just going to call it now. Daryl's going to win. He's going to have the fight of his life. Man, he's had it hard all the way, you know, all the way. But, man, the training, you know, fighting against Beta, fighting against all those different people and the walkers and all that kind of stuff, um, the saviors, all that fight led to this moment and he's trained more than anybody else you know you could say it's another rick and winslow type moment of fighting he even says you know i'm not going to die today but him in the arena with that walker oh man the runner burner uh both maybe some even different walker you know that we haven't of different type a uh, combination of abilities or some some other crazy something but then we see Kodron firing his weapon, maybe Daryl getting away or something, and a crazy looking walker. I ain't gonna die in there. So a bunch of quick scenes, quick shots at the end. We got Isabel, walkers all around. We got uh, the before times. Is that Isabel in the car that hits that guy that's in the hat there, vest and hat? I think we see that guy turning into a walker that he's slammed up against the wall. Maybe that's Isabel driving, maybe not, but she sees the guy reanimate. And I think this is a really, really cool shot of Daryl uh, looking down the gun at that angle at the walkers behind him, kind of looking at him like, oh, supper. And then, of course, the explosion shot and the explosion. You know, that looks like Greg Nicotero right there. I could almost bet, you know, I would bet that is Greg Nicotero. I've seen a close-up shot of a walker coming at Daryl around this type setting as well. It looked like Greg Nicotero, same makeup. I'm thinking that is Greg. 
And you could probably say this is probably a walker off the ship, possibly. You got the dart, I'm sure, you know, does knocking them out work? If they got a circulatory system, like mentioned, uh, you know, in the world beyond post credit scene, that could work, I guess. Got the mask on, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Daryl saying, I ain't going to die today. And uh, it reminds me of uh, Game of Thrones, you know, not today. But then you got that walker unmasked and coming at Daryl full force. That ain't no shambling walker right there, man. That is a walker that is running full force at Daryl, uh, possibly with no weapons. You know, what is he going to do? I know he's going to get out of it. I'm calling it, like I said. Uh, you can't talk me out of it. I've made my decision. I think Daryl's going to win. <laughs> but we've all got a lot of theories out there about this show so far. It's the CRM connections, the, the experiments, why they're doing it. Um, and like I say, I'm about to release a video, upload a video that's about the Tales from the Walking Dead episode. We'll take a look back at that, the PPP card, a possible connection, uh, and how Maine could tie into it all. Um, just some theory type talk and stuff. Of course, we'll see if it matters, if it doesn't matter. But man, I think the season of Daryl Dixon first season is looking really good. I'm enjoying it so far. I think it's going to be a great season. I think anybody that liked the first episode will enjoy the entire season. A lot of people in the comments said they didn't like it. So I guess you probably won't like the rest of the season either. But it's hit or miss. You know, everybody's got their own likes and dislikes. And that's with everything, you know, uh, TV shows, movies, music, uh, comics, video games, you know, whatever it may be, we've all got our likes and dislikes but we can really you know uh at least be nice to each other and come together in the comments and really uh flesh it out talk about our theories uh you know yours may not agree with mine vice versa all that kind of stuff but it's still fun to talk about so definitely join us down in the comments and let us know your ideas so remember daryl dixon on sundays it doesn't come on early uh we'll see how all of that plays out as well with the amc stuff uh amc plus but hey, you guys let me know what you think about it all down in the comments below, and you know I'll join you there. This is James in Nashville. As always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more dead stuff.